Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, last time I put up a video, it was from the uh, World Sudoku Championship. I said I'd have a go um, online at, at, it, at this diagonally consecutive puzzle, which um, was one I didn't attempt in round nine and might well have been worth my time more than puzzle 10, which I did attempt and fell short by five cells on. Um, thus missing 75 points. Now, if I could do this one in, what was the time, about 11 minutes, that would be worth 85 points, which would have been better anyway than the attempt on Puzzle 10. So I'm going to have a look. Now, remember, the rules are that uh, the grey lines are all of the instances of consecutive digits that are diagonally next to each other in the grid. And that's going to be an important constraint, especially the negative part of the constraint. So here it is in Hadoku, and uh, here we go. Let's see how we get on. Um, so the line here is important because, well, no, the, they're not being a line here is important. It fixes that that's not a nine. So the nine in this cell must be here, in this box must be there. Um, so that is quite useful, probably. It really is a case of just trying to find possible places where we can break into this. Uh, two, there, or there. So I'm really just looking at the shoots to start with to see where, looking across or down the boxes, we can find something. Oh, Sorry, that's me and the software. The fact that I'm talking and using software rather than paper is going to have a significant effect on my attempt, I'm afraid. Um, and we might have to allow for that. Um, one would have to be there. One there. Um, hmm. I mean, there's so little to go on at first. Ah, oh, seven's interesting. Seven can't be those three or that one. And it also can't be that one because of the diagonal constraint. So seven is there or there. That makes that one a seven. Okay, that's good. It's always nice to get a digit at all this early. Um, eight can't be there or there. I wish I could use some of the lines in the grid positively at the moment, but I can't see a way to do that. Um, Just can't see where we can get opened here. Right, well, this can't be two, seven, nine, eight, six, four. Could it be four? It could be four. Could be four, five, one, or three. It can't be five, so it's one, three, or four. And then that will make this one. That can't be a one because that would have to be a two. So this now has to be three or five. Sorry, I'm changing the notation a bit. Those are the only possibilities. So four or three. So that has to be a four, in fact, because the other one is three or five. Okay. Oh, this seven, of course. Now that has to be a six because of the diagonal constraint. Okay, right. Um, should have seen that immediately. We got the seven. One is here or here. Can't rule anything out of those corners. Two, four, seven, and eight, six. That's five, one, or three. Mm. Might actually have to go to a full system of candidate notation rather than Snyder notation here. Ah, oh, that is a one now because the because of the one we placed up there. Um, four. 
36912. This is 5, 7, or 8. Let's see if we can get anything out of this. It has to be within one of those, and it can't be 9 or 7. And it can't be 5, because that wouldn't work. So it has to be 6 or 8. Um, 4, 2, 5, 1, 9, 7. This is 3, 6, or 8. Oh, given this is 6 or 8, that can't be 8, so it must be odd. 3, 6, or 8, but this one can't be 1, 4, 5, 7, 6. So it's 2, 3, 8, 9. Can't be the 3, because that doesn't have a possible next to it. Can't be the 8 either. So that's 2 or 9. This is 3 or 8, can't be the 6 now. And up there we've used that. So now from now on, apart from those candidate cells on the grey lines, we're just going to be using negative constraints. Um, it's 2 or 5. Oh, 1 is down here. But I don't know which one yet. Ah, it can't be next. That can't be 2. That must be 2. That must be 3. Because of that one, that central cell couldn't be a two because there's no diagonal line collect connecting either of those two. So that's rather neat. That's actually four or eight now. Um, seven, two, six. One of those is a five. Ah, that can't be. Yeah, same root, same logic. Because of that two, that can't be a three. Should have seen that as well. But, I mean, this is such an unusual way of doing it that I'm just not ready for that kind of deduction. A bit more practice might help. Um, 1, 6, 2, 7, 4, 5. That is 1 or 3. And that is 9 or 8. 5 is one side or the other of this row. 6. 6 is as well, because it can't be in the middle. Um, sorry. 5, 6 there, 5, 6 there. So that's 1 or 3, and it can't be a 3, because it's diagonally next to a 4. So that gets us going a bit. Again, those are 7 and 1 between them. So these are 8 and 9, and that's 3. 3, 1, 4, 7, 5, 6, 2 has to be here. It can't be either in either of the cells diagonally next to uh, the 1. That has to be 9, because so it's diagonally next to a 7. Right. Um, is that, am I missing some other way of disambiguating that lot? No. Um, 63527. And what should I be looking at? Which of these can be a 3? Either that one or that one, not the one below it. Ah, 5s. They're fixed there. That's good. 396512. That's not 4. And it's not an 8 either, so it's 7, uh, which didn't help on the line. Four eight five one nine six can't be in the middle bits because it'd be diagonally next to a five, and it can't be there. It'd be next to a seven. Okay, nine five six one four eight. That's three. These are two and seven. Although I don't. Ah, oh, that one is fixed by the nine, and that one's fixed by the eight. Okay, two seven nine. That's five or three. Oh, come on, come on, we're getting close to this now. 635, that's 9 or 4. That can't be 1, so it must be 9 or 8. 635, 1, 4 or 8. Can't be 8, because it must be diagonally next to a 9, so it's 1 or 4. Uh, five, two, three, seven. One of these is a two. 
And it must be one of those two. It's also, there's a seven here, but that could be there or there. It's not quite the same pattern as at the top. Three, ah, oh, three has to be down the bottom. Four, two, seven, three, nine, and five. Five also has to be down the bottom for exactly the same reasons. Ah, I wish I knew that that was a six, but I don't. One, four, five, three, nine. Now, because those are five and three as a pair, nine has to be either there or there. That puts nine either there. Oh, what have I done? Sorry, just not getting the clicking right. Nine, five, four, seven. Must be one of those three. Can't tell which. Five, three, four, two. There's obviously some nice bit of logic still to come that I'm not spotting yet. Oh, four. Yeah, no, we've got that. Six, though, can't be diagonally next to that five. Doesn't really help, I don't think. There's still three others. Ah, oh, six, yes, okay. It can't be there either because of that five. So six is either there or there. Um, what about this one? Nine, five, six, two, seven, four. Can't be three because of that, so it's either one or eight. It can't be one, because that's also next to the two. Okay. Hope that logic was right. Nine, five, six, eight, two. Yeah, one, four, one, three. This is four or seven. But I don't know which. Ah. This one is not four, one, three, or seven. Can't rule them out. Ah, go away. What was that? That was four or seven. Click on it. There we go. One, three, or seven. Oh, it can't be the one, can it? Because that's in the same column. In fact, one of these is a one, and it's obviously that one. Ah, this is getting easier than I realized. That must be the six. That must be the four. This must be the seven, I think. Yes. So now we've got one and three here, but I don't know the order. Yes, I do, because there's a three above that. Okay. One, three, one, two, five. One of those is a four. So probably five, one, six. That's the nine. Um, two and three here. That can't be the two because of the diagonal. Okay. Uh, four and nine, four and nine. These are eight, seven, six across the middle. So that's eight, that's seven because of the diagonal. Um, one of these is a six, don't know which. Come on, come on, we're nearly there. Two, one, three, four, five, six. So these are eight, seven, nine, one, four. That's two, is it? Yeah. Not one, two. There we go. One, four, two. Um, eight, seven, nine, two, four, one, three, five, and six in some order, but no diagonals to disambiguate them. Five, three, two, one, nine, seven, four. This is six or eight still. Ah, oh, this one's now four. Okay, that was, that's been clear for a while and I haven't spotted it. Irritating. One. And that one's fixed by the diagonal seven. Right. Uh, that doesn't actually help everything. That can't be eight because of the nine. So, I think this is right now. Nine, four, three, two, one, nine, seven. Six and finally, six and finally, the last line is achieved. The last line in the grid: seven, eight, five, three, four, six, six, two, four, five, nine, three. That's five and six, and these are six and four, no, five and four. And there we go. That's the puzzle. Um, you know, it, it's the difficulty is knowing whether I would have been quicker on paper. I think I probably would. It might well have been worth doing that one instead. The, the negative constraints worked quite neatly, and... 
wasn't very good at spotting them, I have to admit. So, I don't know, touch and go. I think that would have been a better choice than the uh, the disparity one, which took a lot of working out with odds and evens. Interesting solve. I hope that's been interesting for you. But, um, you know, I hope you also had a go at the puzzle before before looking at me having my go at it. Um, an interesting puzzle. And thank you very much for watching. Hope that was of some benefit. See you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.